delighted to have all of you here today uh, for a discussion of the crisis of terrorism. Our guest this morning will be His Excellency uh, Mohammed Ayub, the acting permanent representative of Afghanistan. Uh, just a few words about the ground rules. We are broadcasting this morning from the headquarters of the United Nations. Uh, uh, Ambassador Ayub uh, will begin with a conversation with our moderator, Ambassador Ahmad Kamal. Uh, at that point, we will do a round robin uh, question and answer uh, with the ambassadors, beginning with our guests at Lehigh, moving then to our guests at Lock Haven, uh, third to our guests at Montclair High School, fourth to our guests at Roger Williams, and then finally uh, returning here to FDU. Uh, uh, Ambassador Kamal, please take it away. Thank you very much. I noticed that you have not listed Madison. Ah, you're right. Uh, Madison before Tina. Right. Beauty Thank you very much. It's a please. pleasure to be with you uh, and a pleasure to have as our distinguished panelist, Ambassador Ayub, thank you very much. Thank I know you. it's thank a very Ambassador. difficult day because there are a lot of uh, important resolutions being voted upon upstairs, and that is one reason why his colleague, uh, Ms. Najaf, <coughs> cannot join us because uh, violence against women is being debated and voted upon upstairs, and uh, she has a point of view to present there. But that being said, uh, in the limited time that we have, uh, let me briefly uh, lay down the parameters of this debate. We are talking terrorism. And for some reason, terrorism is supposed to have started on 9-11. And that's just not true. The history of terrorism goes back centuries. In the first century, we had the Zealots. In the 12th century, we had the Hashashin. And even in contemporary times, you have a long list of quote-unquote terrorist organizations from Aung San Rico in Japan to ETA in Spain to the IRA in Ireland to, uh, uh, to uh, Irgun in Israel to Hamas in Palestine to Shining Path in Peru. And so the, the list is, and the Taliban, uh, and so, and Al-Qaeda. And so there is an enormous list of terrorists. Even the concept of suicide bombing, which is catching us so much in our attention these days, is goes back to the LTTE in Sri Lanka. They are the people who invented, and before them, the Japanese invented the concept of the kamikaze and the harakiri. And so terrorism is old. Number two, we at the United Nations have been struggling with terrorism for 40 years and have been unable to arrive at a definition of terrorism. We are unable because of the fundamental fact that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. And so it appears that in the battle for self-determination, if you win the battle, you become a founding father. If you lose the battle, you become a terrorist. In other words, the definition really depends on who wins and who loses. That's problem number two. Problem number three is that in the different definitions of terrorism, you have many different ones. The State Department has its own definition, which talks of acts by sub-national groups. Now, most of us do not accept this State Department definition because the concept is not that of a sub-national group, but of anybody committing a terrorist act. And the non-aligned movement, to which about 116 countries belong today, decided in 1992 that the worst form of terrorism is state-sponsored terrorism. In other words, when states give the power of the state to terrorist acts, that is the most reprehensible form. And finally, in arriving at a definition, the simplest definition is the killing of innocent civilians. And if that is so, 
then you can try to make your own chart to see who has killed more innocent civilians in the last uh, contemporary times. And you may find that the chart gives you surprising results. Huh. When you add up Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Dresden, you get a result of innocent civilians, which is totally different from what we are speaking about today. And so the effort at the UN is not to talk too much about terrorism, because we cannot agree on what it is, but rather to talk about terrorist acts. That is easier to identify. And so at the UN, we've got a dozen conventions, each one relating to a specific terrorist act, hijacking of an aircraft, blowing up, you, uh, suicide bombing, etc. And so terrorist acts are relatively easy to identify and agree upon. Now, the next problem that we have is that in trying to address terrorism, we have to see what is the motivation of the terrorist, of the person committing the terrorist act. It's, after all, totally abnormal for people to uh, come and study in the United States for five years, learning how to fly planes, with a single focus of flying that plane into a skyscraper. What is it that motivates that person? What is it that motivates a young woman with a baby at home to put on a suicide vest and to go and blow herself up, leaving her baby unattended. And so we have to address the root causes of terrorism. What are the root causes of that motivation? Is it that we have a certain set of unresolved territorial disputes in the world where the right of self-determination has been denied for decades? Is that a root cause? <coughs> Is it that we have been trying to prop up in different countries around the world non-democratic regimes against the wishes of their own populations because the regime is friendly to us? In other words, our foreign policy is based on alliances, not on democracy. Is that a reason for the frustration which exists in the world? Is it poverty, which as you know is endemic in the world, with such wide gaps between the super rich and the super poor. Is that a cause for the frustration which we have in the world? Now, whatever it is, we'll try to go through it today. And I'm going to ask this question of Ambassador Yu. But in the meantime, we have to remember that terrorism, which was the main focus of our attention, seems to have been overtaken by the new ice cream, uh, ice cream uh, flavor of the day, which is now the financial crisis. And so we are talking much more about the financial crisis as a cause for frustrations, etc., than of terrorism. So keep that in mind, that it is possible that we just like the crisis of the day to be the focus of our attention. And so, Ambassador Yu, my question to you, sir, is, you come from Afghanistan. This is a country which harbored terrorism. Uh, I come from a country next door which is accused of harboring terrorism have today. have never had this before. And so uh, you suffered because uh, the fact that you had harbored people <coughs> led to a war against Afghanistan, which really bombed you into the Stone Age. And the country failed. And so you are the primary target and victim of terrorism today. Please describe in a short time what has terrorism meant for Afghanistan. Uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador Kamal. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, dear uh, uh, friends and uh, Mr. Uh, Scores, Mr. Uh, Mr. Murphy, and it's my pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, and uh, 